Hello. Hey, Steve-O. What's up? My son, uh, I, I thought we'd just do a little quick FaceTime. Oh, yeah? What are you up to? <laughs> good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. What are you up to? <laughs> um, hey, I just wanted to ask you uh, just a couple, couple things about what's going on in your life. Um, oh. what, what are you happy about? What's, what's, what's good in your life right now? Um, well, I'm super happy about the age my kids are both at. Uh, both, both my girls are just so fun right now. Kai is just insane every day. <laughs> and Kai is, they're, they're kind of nice to each other. But they're at a fun age. It's super fun. That's awesome. And every age is fun. Yeah. And it, it's cool. I agree with you. You see them go up to another age. It's like, oh, now they can do more. They're yeah. more interactive, all this stuff. That's cool. What, yeah. What's something in your life maybe that um, you're frustrated with or you wish was a little different, maybe something that's not going so, you know, not so awesome that, that you can share with me and a couple other friends? <laughs> hmm, that is a great question. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I have a couple things. You want a list or? I mean, Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear what's um, well, on your heart. I weigh, I weigh more than I've ever weighed, so that's not my favorite thing in the world. I, that's uh, a good thing, right? But yeah, I've expanded my ministry. As they yeah. Say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then my backyard is an, ever, uh, an ever-growing jungle that I just, I just don't want to touch, but I can't stop thinking about it, so that's not my favorite. But then the jungle keeps growing, so, you know, I'm kind of not helping myself. Just uh, the backyard will be there when it's warmer. I just think just, <laughs> just let's just try not to think about the backyard right now. Yeah. A- yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And um, what, what is something about our relationship, yours and mine, that is important to you? What's, what's important uh, to you about our relationship? Uh, there's a lot of things that are important about our relationship. Um, I think... I think one is just I've always wanted to be like you. Um, I've always said, you know, you're my hero, and I want to be like you. I want to be a father like you. I want to be a husband like you. Um, so I feel like just watching how you take care of mom, how you take care of us and the grandkids, that's something that's really special to me because it's not just, you know, watching from afar. It's like, okay, I, I see how you love us, and I want to be like that. So that's really special to me. That's awesome. I love you. I love you too. Thanks for taking a little time with me. Uh, Anytime. I'm not doing anything. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. All right. Well, I'll I'll talk to you a little bit later. All right. Love you. Bye. Love you. Love you. Bye. (laughs) So, oh. (laughs) So. Now let me ask my wife, Pastor Shelley, if you knew that I had just had a long FaceTime with Stephen, our son, uh, what would you ask me about? Like, what, what would you ask me about after? What's going on with him? How's he doing? Well, wouldn't you ask me about my phone? Like, how's, how was my phone doing during the talk? Wouldn't you ask me, like, uh, did, was FaceTime an effective medium? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Wow, and I feel like, I feel like we just talked. <laughs> I know, right? That's awesome. So our focus is not on the tool. It's on the person. Right? Our focus isn't on my phone. Was my phone cool? Was my phone working? Was the app effective? Did the app work even? That's not the focus. The focus is on the person that I was FaceTiming with. It wasn't even on my wife's mind to ask about any of the technical things. If she heard that I, I had a conversation with him, she's going to ask me, how is he doing? What was it like? You know, what, what did you talk about? How, you know, how, how was it going for him? Our focus is not on the tool. It's on the person. Today, we start 21 days of prayer and fasting in our church. It is an annual thing, and we've been here 13 years, so we've probably done it 13 times. I, I, maybe we've done it 12. You know how it works. Yeah, it was like about a year after we got here would, be, would have been our first one. 
Uh, so it's, it's an annual part of our rhythm. And I, I feel like it's very important at the beginning to say, is our purpose to fast? Oh, several people saying no. What? Is our purpose to pray? No. So today, I tried to trick you with that question. <laughs> you would think, I mean, it's 21 days of prayer and fasting, so on some level, our purpose is to pray and fast. But that's not our purpose. It's not the why. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Why do we fast and pray? What do we hope to get out of it? Here's a good one. Does praying and fasting really work? What if you've been praying about something for a long time and you have not seen that answer yet? What then? So today I want to talk to you about discovering the secret place. And it's the name of our a new series of messages we're starting today. Discovering the secret place. So would you get out your Bibles and turn to Psalm 91, 1 to 2. Now here's the thing. I, I value some routines I, I feel like routine prevents crisis in a lot of ways, so that's good. Um, but I, I have noticed that I say every single week, would you take out your Bible? And some do, some don't. Why would I do that? Because I want you to see what I see. I, in any given message, I don't have time to bring the whole thing. I'm just going to bring you what I think is the nugget, but I want you to be able to see what comes before, what comes after it. If you're using a physical paper Bible, I encourage you to underline it. Write a note in the margin. Write a question to God. God, what are, what are you saying to me here? You see what I mean? I, I, I encourage you to interact with it. If you've got the, the, the Bible on a, a, a tablet or device, that's great, or phone, on your smartphone, that's awesome. You can also um, highlight verses. You can see what comes before and after. So I, I, I just want to encourage you to engage. That's, that's why I say that each week. We are going to put verses up on the screen, but I, there's more than just that verse. So I, I want you to see that. With me, as I think about praying and fasting, my I'm just going to be honest. Is it all right if I just be honest with you? Yep. And not just say the pastor thing, but just say the real thing. <laughs> My biggest frustration with prayer is not seeing the specific answers I ask for. And not seeing the specific answers you ask for. That's frustrating. And I've been on kind of a quest for, I would say, maybe about a year now, just talking very honestly with the Lord about it. The Lord knows what's going on. This is not a shock to him. It's not surprising to him. And I've been talking to him about it and just saying, Lord, that's, that's frustrating because I believe you, you hear, I believe you answer, but I don't see exactly that thing that I'm looking for every time. Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Um, in the Sermon on the Mount, so Matthew chapter 6 is where I'm thinking specifically, Jesus talks about praying and fasting. And it's, it's, that would be a great passage for you to read sometime during this 21 days. That's uh, just the, the first part of, of Matthew 6. And Jesus taught about prayer, and he said that hypocrites, a hypocrite is someone who, um, they're not the same on the outside as they are on the inside, basically. He said hypocrites pray fancy prayers to show off for other people. And Jesus said, well, if they do that, then the showing off is their reward, that um, fame or the, the, uh, the people saying, wow, you pray great fancy prayers, that was their reward. That's it. In other words, God's not rewarding that. The only reward they get is the showing off. But Jesus said, but there is a reward for fasting and praying. And he said, if you go off by yourself and you just get alone with God, your father will be there and he will reward you. He will. That is a promise of Jesus. So the, the, our Heavenly Father has a better kind of reward. He doesn't necessarily say in Matthew 6 what it is, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that in this message. 
a reward for people who fast and pray for a higher purpose. So we're not just praying. Our purpose isn't just to pray and check the box. I prayed. That's why I said the trick question at the beginning. Our purpose is not just to fast and check a box, see how good I am, I went without food. That's not our purpose. So we're going to talk about what our purpose is. Now, the reward that Jesus promised may be the specific answer you're praying for. Lord, I'm praying that this leg would be healed. That is a reward when God says, yes, I'm ready now. Now is the time I'm responding to your prayer that way. Yes. And it may not be. It may not be that specific answer in that specific timing. But it will be rewarded. Praying and fasting will be rewarded. 100% of the time, it will be. You may not see the difference it makes with your eye, but it will make a spiritual difference. It will. That is a promise that you will be rewarded by our Heavenly Father, the one who owns the earth and everything in it. Psalm chapter 91, verses 1 and 2 says this, those who live in the shelter, the, that, that word means the hiding place, the, the covering, the secret place of the Most High. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest. They will stay. They will uh, be at peace. They will continue. They will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him him. This is one of the most quoted Bible passages anywhere in the Bible, usually in the King James translation. I just read it in the NLT. Those who, who live in the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. That's, that's the way a lot of times you hear it quoted. But there's a couple of concepts I just wanted to not breeze by. The first one is shelter. Shelter. This word means a hiding place. It means a secrecy, a secretness. Those who live in the shelter, the secretness, the hiding place of the Most High. And the hiding place is a place that is suitable for hiding something or someone. So in this case, we're talking about us being hidden there, you being hidden there. It is a covering. And so there is something about God that he's got your back. He is your fortress. He is your protector. And when you are in him, you are covered. He, he's got your back. You are protected. And then the second con concept is that you will find rest. You will find rest. And that word implies that you will be solid, that you will be steady, that you won't be agitated, that you won't be um, wandering, that you will have a secure place. So I want to read this same, uh, this, these same two verses in the Amplified translation of the Bible. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. On Him I lean and rely, and in Him I confidently trust. Isn't that a beautiful passage of Scripture? And this is where we get the name of this series of messages, Discovering the Secret Place. The secret place is God. And we're going to keep looking at that. So in here, in these two couple verses, I see a promise, a condition, and a declaration. So I want to just talk about those real quick. There's a, there's a promise here. You will be as stable as a house built solidly on bedrock. Nothing will overcome you or take you down. You will find rest for your soul, your life. You will be a solid person. This is the promise I'm trying to describe to you. Uh, and a biblical promise is something you can sink your teeth into. This is, this is one of those things that I would say, you grab onto this and don't let go until you realize it. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible, and, and the next thing I'm going to talk about is the condition. Okay, so that's coming. But this is one of those, it is a promise of God. And so this is one of those things that I would say, if you don't see it immediately, 
don't give up. Like, grab on like a bulldog and don't let go, all right? This is a biblical promise. Now, this promise does have a condition, and many of God's promises do. And sometimes we claim a promise, but we don't fulfill the condition. So that promise is not coming to you. There is a condition here. And the the condition in this passage is, if you live in the secret place of God... So in other words, if you make God your covering and your shelter, not your own ingenuity, not anything you can figure out, your own strategy, if that's your covering and your shelter, then that's your covering and shelter. Good luck with that. But if you make God your covering and your shelter, then you will be solid. You will be able to abide and stay and find rest. So what what do I mean by by living in God? Those who live in the shelter of God. How do you live in God? Well, I think one way to look at it would be this way. When someone is passionate about a sport or an activity, we say he lives there. Like, for example, she lives at the golf course every summer. It's an expression. She lives at the golf course. What what does that mean? We're going to get back to that. Uh, We might say, oh, the kids live at the lake. Man, when it's hot, the kids live at the lake. Or he lives at the river during fishing season. Am I right? (laughs) He lives at the river in fishing season. (laughs) And every picture is a picture of a fish (laughs) on Facebook. That's a passion. And that's, what we, that's an expression that we say, when, some, when we say someone lives there, what does that mean? It, it means they enjoy it so much their heart is always there. They love it. They can't wait to get back there. And there's lots of things in our lives we say, man, I just, I live there. I, I would live there if I could. I just live, you know, in, in that experience, in, in those moments. It means that a person who lives there, they're, they're always making choices to get back there. Because their heart is there. They live there. They're steady there. They're solid there. They say no to other things in order to get back there. Like, uh, maybe I don't want to do the weeding. I want to do the fishing or, you know, like that. I, I don't want to do my homework. I want to go to the golf course. Like, like that. We make choices to get back there. We create opportunities for that activity to get back there to that place that they love and they enjoy. So if you live... In the secret place of God. Wow, he loves God so much. He lives in the secret place of God. That's what will be said about you or me. If that means you make him your passion and your desire. And if you do that, if you do that, you will be solid and at rest. You will be stable. You won't be flaky. You won't be going, ah, the world's gonna end and I'm upset, or I'm in danger, or I fear everything. You're not gonna be fearing everything. You're gonna be solid. Because you just go, I, 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 I live in God, and I'm okay there. I'm solid there. I'm at rest there. So even if something bad comes into my life, and it has into all of our lives, we're still solid. We're not, we're not freaking out because I'm solid in God. I live there, and I can't wait to get back to that secret place of God. And if you do that, you'll be able to make this declaration from verse 2. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. Wow. If that could be our confession of our mouths, if that could be what we talk about as part of our congregation, if that could be what you say in your home, at your workplace, I trust God. I trust him. I know that bad thing just came my way. I trust God. He's my refuge. He's dependable. So where is this secret place of God? How do you get there? How do you develop a passion and obsession for the secret place? Well, in Matthew 11, 28, I I knelt in, in my home office this morning. I just prayed, Lord, let Matthew 11, 28 to 30 be my reality during these next 21 days starting today. Jesus said, come to me, come to me. A couple of you who are weary, is that what it says? All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Who is that promise for? All of you. All of you who come to Jesus for rest. 
That is a promise for you. In John 15, 4 in the Bible, it's written down, Jesus' words, remain in me, abide in me, live, dwell in me, and I will remain in you. So here is what I'm driving at at this message. Jesus is your secret place. Jesus is your secret place. His presence, he is your shelter. He is your covering. He is your hiding place. Jesus, how do you get there? Go to Jesus. That's how. You could be driving and go to Jesus. You could be at home in your bedroom and go to Jesus. You could be kneeling at your couch and go to Jesus. You can live in him, in his presence. In, in, uh, in John 4, 15, 4, Jesus said, Remain in me, and I'll remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me, dwell in me, live in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. He makes it very clear. How do you get to the secret place? Go to Jesus. Jesus is the vine. You're the branches. If you're cut off from him, you wither and die. That is just a natural illustration. When you cut off a branch off a plant, it doesn't have those nutrients in the water anymore. It will, the branch will die. And if you're come, cut off from Jesus, spiritually you will wither and die. We're just coming off the holiday season. And I would, I would say pretty much uh, every Christmas, uh, again, I'm just being pretty transparent here today, Tr Christmas is my hardest season every year. This year, I would say, has been my best Christmas in terms of just kind of staying in there with God and staying at solid and being at peace. But uh, typically, Christmas is my hardest time. It's a very busy time for the church. I have extra messages to prepare, extra things going on with family. And just there, it's, it's a very busy time. It's a very easy during this time to say, I'll get to my secret place later. I'll pray later. There, there was at least one time during, uh, well, I, I guess it, it sort of snowballs, but at, at one point when I looked at our Bible reading plan, I was like, oh, I'm seven chapters behind. That doesn't necessarily mean seven days in a row, but over like the last couple of weeks, oh, about half the time I even read God's word. That's my one concrete thing, because I'll check them off, because I, I want to know, am I... Am I have I been in the Word? And then I could look at it and go, oh, I guess I haven't. <laughs> I guess I've not really been going to the secret place. And you might feel a little bit of that too. During Christmas, man, we're just going everywhere and, and trying to travel, and it's stressful, and it's stressful financially. It's, it's stressful relationally a lot of times. It, it's stressful on deadlines, trying to get presents wrapped or meals cooked or, or different things. There's just so much going on. It's such a beautiful, wonderful celebration. But now on the other side, we look back and go, wow, haven't been really abiding in the vine, not really been living there. And so today, I just want to invite you back to the secret place. Yeah. I want to invite you back. There are lots of ways to get in the secret place, into Jesus' presence. But right now, we're going to emphasize prayer and fasting. That is a great way to get into the secret place. Because we're setting aside a, a time-consuming thing of, of buying, preparing, eating, cleaning up after food. And we're capturing that time and we're saying, man, that's such a foundational thing. We've got to eat. But even that is less important than being in the secret place. So we're saying no to food, at least some meals. And we're saying yes, a bigger yes, to God. Fasting is setting aside food for a spiritual purpose. That's what it is. And uh, we've got all kinds of ideas for you there in the, in the booklet. Uh, Pastor Shelley put that together. So, such a great job. There, there's uh, suggestions for how to fast, how to pray, uh, even maybe about a little how to journal and different things. There's just a bunch of stuff in there for you. At its core, fasting is simply setting aside food for a spiritual purpose. And I just really want to invite you to the secret place during these 21 days, uh, if you've never fasted before, then fast a meal. Just start with one meal. Just start somewhere. Don't let fear keep you from fasting. That would be the enemy at work in your life. Don't let fear, I'm going to be hungry, I might faint, this is going to be crazy, I don't know what's going to Don't let that keep you from fasting. 
And I want to invite you to the secret place. What is prayer? Prayer is two-way communication with God. That's it. So our purpose is not to fast. Our purpose is not to check the box on praying. Our purpose is to dwell in the secret place with Jesus. And we will use the tools of prayer and fasting. Does that make sense? Because you could pray and recite a prayer and your heart never even thinks about God. So our purpose isn't really even just to pray. Our purpose is to be with Jesus, have a conversation, which is prayer. And fasting helps us to just be, wow, we're, we're serious about this. We're, we're honing in and we're setting aside some stuff so that we can have more time with Jesus. As Donna Barrett wrote, God could do incredible things in response to your prayers if you would simply give up the need to see the results. Let's just hit that one more time. This really spoke to me this week. God could do incredible things in response to your prayers if you would simply give up the need to see the results. So when we talk about faith, we, we, we are a faith, man, we're a faith church. We, we, we know faith in God is so important. And when we pray, so important. And a lot of times when we talk about faith, which is, by the way, belief, trust, and commitment to obey. When, when we talk about faith, we're talking about faith for those things that we're praying for. So when we say pray with faith, a lot of times you may think, oh yeah, I need to have faith for that $1,000. I need to have faith for that healed knee. I need to have faith for fill in the blank, for those things. And that is right, but I, I feel like that stops short. We, what's missing is faith in God. It's just faith in God himself, faith that God is responsive, faith that God is good, faith that God does. That takes faith, especially if you don't see the results. And that is what we're missing so many times, faith that God is responsive, that he is wise, that he is all-powerful, that he is loving, and that if he says wait, it's actually a loving decision. Or if he even says no, it's actually a loving decision. You, you, you might go, well, I don't understand. That's right, because you and I are not God. We are not. So we, we don't know everything that he is working in us. Your part is to be faithful to talk with God in prayer. That's your part. That's something concrete you can do. You can set aside time. You can fast. You can pray. And, and you can go be with God. That's something you can do. But in addition to being faithful, also have faith in the character of God himself. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, and we see it in the human realm all the time in our human relationships. What, what conclusion do you jump to when someone disappoints you? Do you automatically think, oh, they're a bad person? That kind of reveals a little bit of what, what you believe about their character. On the other hand, if there are people in your life that you just, you just flat out trust them, they've proven themselves over and over, they've been with you, you know they love you, you know they do. They could even bring a harsh word of correction to you, hey, I see you are going down a very dangerous trail, my friend. This is dangerous. And your reaction will be, oh, thank you. I know you love me. Thank you for saying that. I needed to have a wake-up call. Because you already have faith in their character. You know who they are. So you don't assume the worst. You don't go around saying, oh, man, they're so harsh. They're so unthoughtful. They're so unloving. They don't even care about me. That's not your reaction. Because you go, I know you love me. That was hard, but it does not change the fact, I know you love me. Do you see? That's an illustration of faith in God. I trust you, Lord. That did not work out how I prayed for. That was not the timing. That was not the answer I was looking for. But naked came I, I into the world. Naked I will return. I brought nothing in this world. I bring nothing out. I trust you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Amen? That's faith in God and his character. And sometimes we are missing that. Sometimes I have been missing that. And it makes a big difference when we pray, when you pray. So God will respond to your prayers, all of them. He will. Every single one, God will respond to your prayers. Whether or not you see his response with your physical eye, whether or not you see the difference it made in this lifetime, but God will respond to your prayers. So instead of asking, does prayer even work? That is focusing on the phone. That is focusing on the FaceTime. Instead of focusing on the phone, focus on the person. So instead of saying, well, does prayer work? And sometimes people will, like a sort of churchy language, people will say, prayer works. <laughs> That's not our focus. Say instead, my God is who he says he is. And I have the privilege to talk with him and to hear from him. That's faith. That's a whole different approach to prayer and fasting. Get in the secret place with God. 1 John 5, 14 in the Bible says, and we are confident we have faith that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Yeah. Do you see how that's a conditional promise? <laughs> whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Oh, now we've opened up a whole nother problem, as they say. A whole nother problem. How do I know what pleases him? Ah. Stephen, what are you happy about in your life? Oh, yeah, that is really cool. I celebrate that with you. What are you frustrated with about in your life? Oh, yeah, I could see how that would be discouraging. Stephen, what's important to you about our relationship? Oh, oh that is awesome. How do I know that? I talked to him. Now I know what's important to him. It just took some time. It took me asking a question and me closing my mouth. This is what I usually do in prayer. This is what I need to do. But I had to also ask. You know, there are, there are times I just say, Lord, how are you feeling this morning? He has feelings. He might be angry about some injustice or he might be rejoicing about some beautiful thing. Have you ever asked God how he's feeling? How would you know unless you ask him? That's the secret place. Now, can you imagine spending so much time with God that, that he begins to talk to you more through his word, through prayer, and you begin to go, oh, he's really concerned about my neighbor. I don't even think about my neighbor, but he's really concerned about him. And so then you begin to pray, Lord, send me to my neighbor. And God says, okay, I will. I'm going to open up a door for that. Do you see? how that would radically change your relationship with God? Fasting is setting aside food. You're saying no to something so you can say a bigger yes to Jesus' presence. Time in a secret place. Time. Time. Time, asking, listening, period. If you do that, on January 29th, when we celebrate, you're going to have something to celebrate. It may or may not be a specific answer to a prayer request you wrote down, but you will have something to celebrate. You, you'll be able to say, wow, I began to hear God in a new way. I, I be, the, there were, there was, I'm looking for someone on January 29th that their testimony is, wow, I was reading the Bible just like I always do, and all of a sudden this verse just popped out of the page, and I just stopped and went, wow, God, I think you're talking to me about this, and we just talked, and we had a great time. That would be an awesome testimony. I'm expecting some other testimonies like, I'm healed. Like, I'm expecting, I had a breakthrough. But also, that is a great testimony. I met with God, and he met with me. That's awesome. That's awesome. So in this 21 days of prayer and fasting, I want to invite you to live in Jesus. The same way we say, oh, the kids live at the lake during the summer. To live in Jesus like that. Always wanting to get back. Always wanting to look for opportunities to be with Jesus. 
read his word, listen to worship songs, talk to him, listen to him. I, I sometimes like to just have an, a, a pen, a, a blank piece of paper and a pen on my lap and just go, Jesus, I'm listening. Sometimes there's something I can write down, sometimes there's not, and that's okay. I know God wants to speak to me. I give you time, okay? I, I, I didn't hear anything particular that time. Okay, I'm coming back in four hours for my next meal time, Lord. I'm shaking it up this year. Every year, uh, for the past several years, I've had a certain kind of pattern. It's 21 days, so I've never just gone 21 days in a row with no food. I, I just kind of do a, a variety some, some days. Uh, just uh, Maybe I'll have some juice. Always water, every day, always water. Sometimes I've done Daniel fast. I've done different things this year. Do I say this out loud because <laughs> now I'm accountable? I'm planning for the first time to just take this week of uh, juice only, juice or water. And so normally my, my past record is like four days, so I'm, I'm going for seven. Lord, help me. And that's the right stance, isn't it? Lord, help me. Isn't that the right stance? Lord, help me. I'm not going to let fear make me not do what I feel like God's calling me to do. I'm just going to say, Lord, help me. Help me. This is what I'm going for, Lord. And then after that, I'll, do, I'll just fast certain meals in the, in the next couple of weeks. So I will be fasting during the whole 21 days, but not solidly. If you've never fasted, jump in one meal. Just start there and see how awesome it is just to spend an hour with God in his presence in the secret place. It's awesome. And if you, if you fasted before, let the Lord lead you. Fast enough to, to where you feel like I'm in the secret place. That's, that's really the goal. I'm in the secret place. I want, I want to be there. I'm expecting to hear from God in this next seven days in a powerful way. Me personally, I'm expecting it. Because I'm going to go and be, spend time with my Jesus. He's going to be there. Jesus is your secret place. He is. Would you stand to your feet? And let's pray. We're going to pray according to God's word. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we want to live in your secret place. We want to live there. Just like the kids want to live at the lake during the summer. Lord, I, we want to live in you, want to be with you, want to be covered by you, protected by you, hidden away from life storms in you. We want to live, abide, dwell in you, Jesus, the secret place of the Most High. And Lord, I pray that we would be solid people, not shaken people, not complaining people, not worried people, not anxious people, but solid people because we have lived in you. So Lord, we give you these, the, these 21 days of prayer and fasting. We give them to you. We want to be with you. At the end, the victory won't be we fasted or we prayed. The victory will be that we were with you. We were with you. We heard from you. We enjoyed you. We worshiped you. We talked to you. That will be the victory, Lord. And so, Lord, I just prophesy as I look ahead to January 29th after, it's, after the fast is over, I prophesy that we are a people that are going to be closer to you, Lord, than we've ever been before. I prophesy that our year is going to be blessed because we gave you January. I prophesy that we are going to be more solid than ever before to the point by the, at the end of this year, our workmates are saying, why are you so solid despite everything? I thank you, Lord. I just declare over us, that's how we are. That's how we are. I can see it in the eyes of my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there are some of you who are here in the room and some of you watching online, you have not even, you don't have that, and you haven't started a relationship with Jesus. Or if you started it at some point, you walked away. And I just want to invite you back. I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus, like we've been talking about today, faith in Jesus to forgive you of your sins, to save you, to be your solution for the sin problem we all have. How do you do that? Turn away from your sin, those things that separate you from God. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead. That's a great starting point. So with your heads bowed, I just want to ask you if today you want to put your faith in Jesus, you'd like to become a Christian. Maybe you're coming back to him 
or you're starting a relationship with him, if today you're making that decision, would you raise your hand just so I know who I'm praying for specifically? And online, you can raise your hand to God and he will see you. I'd love to just coach you in a prayer if this is your day. And, and church, let's just all pray this together. If you're, if you're putting your faith in Jesus today, say it to him. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We just say welcome to the family of God. And we have prepared a course to help you know what your next steps are following Jesus, the following Jesus course. And I know there are several of you who have started it, started the course, but you have not finished it yet. I just want to challenge you during these 21 days of prayer and fasting, this is a great time to finish that course because it's a course about following Jesus. So why don't you set a goal that say you're fasting three meals in a certain day, that one of those meals during that, that fasting time, you do fa following Jesus course. All right, so let's make some progress and get closer to Jesus. One final thing that we want to do. Well, I want to invite you forward, and pastors are coming now, invite you forward for prayer and for anointing, mainly for anointing with oil. Jesus said in Matthew 6, when you fast, anoint your head with oil, and then wash your face so you're not bragging about it. But anoint your head with oil, a symbol of the Holy Spirit, uh, that says, I'm setting myself aside, uh, apart, for these 21 days to press into Jesus. All right, so we're going to just anoint you. This is going to be a pretty quick blessing. This is not really going to be, we're not going to have time to, to pray, you know, at length for each person. But we want to just bless you, anoint you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit for the fast. So if you're going to be fasting any meals over the next 21 days, or if you're going to be praying about which ones to, to fast. That's fine. Come on. Come on forward, and we're going to pray for you. And because it's the fasting time and I've already started, I'm popping a Tic Tac in. Wow. All right. Come on forward. Any of the pastors, we'll, pray, we'll anoint you.